When Herbert was entering the NFL draft, he had the label as certified bust on him. Brett Coleman made a video saying that Justin Herbert was Mitch Trubisky, but cranked up to 11. And Strong Opinion Sports uh, ended up making or talking about how Herbert was uh, someone he wouldn't draft just because he didn't think he loved the game of football. Alex Rollins made a video saying why Justin Herbert is the next NFL draft bust. And I'm not saying this to shit on those guys who were, you know, calling him or labeling him as a bust or Mitch Trubisky, but dialed up to 11. I'm just doing it so you can get an idea of how the internet felt about Herbert when he was coming out at the time. So Justin Herbert played three seasons at Oregon, and a lot of people thought that uh, he would come out in 2019. And in that case, the Giants may have gotten him at 6th overall, or the Broncos at 10 overall. But he wanted to stay his senior year because uh, his younger brother Patrick was actually coming out of high school and going to play for the Ducks. So throughout his time at Oregon, he was labeled as very inconsistent. And his wide receiver uh, room had a bunch of injury issues. Uh, they weren't very talented. And they also had a number of drops, which ended up hurting Herbert as well. And it was always the same issue with Herbert, you know. He played in the Pac-12, which, yeah, it's uh, they've got some good football schools in there. But it's really not impressive as a whole when compared to the SEC or the top-tier talent of the Big Ten. And whenever he played against Washington or Cal, he would look, I mean, mediocre at best. But when he played against CU, and I live 45 minutes away from Boulder, so I know all about how terrible the CU Buffs football team is. Uh, he would look like the second coming of Jesus himself. I guess more than anything, it was a combination of Marcus Arroyo, who's now the head coach at UNLV, and never having a top-tier receiver or really good receiving talent. Because I'm not sure if you guys know, but Keenan Allen and Mike Williams and Hunter Henry and Austin Eckler are all thousand times better as pass catchers as literally anything Oregon could offer. And I hope that turns around because I'm friends with a dude whose younger brother is actually committed to Oregon uh, in 2021. Basically, their entire offense at Oregon throughout Herbert's basically entire tenure there was just built around screens and running it up the gut. So maybe, just maybe, we never actually got to see how good Herbert was. And he, whenever he did play well, and whenever we were able to see what he was able to do, he played to top six pick status, which ended up getting him drafted by the Chargers in the NFL draft. Also, uh, Marcus Arroyo, who was the offensive coordinator for Oregon, is now the head coach of UNLV, as I mentioned. And UNLV is still a trash can of a football program. Now, as I'm sure you guys all know, uh, virtual draft meant virtual offseason, meant basically limited training camp or zero training camp at all. In the case of some teams that actually ended up getting hit hard by the virus, and OTAs were so weird. Uh, zero preseason games, basically. And yeah, uh, the Chargers and Rams were actually the teams featured on Hard Knocks this year. And on Hard Knocks, I only watched a few episodes because I don't like how the NFL is trying to push the LA narrative. But I really did enjoy seeing Herbert, and I did like seeing some of the drills they had him partaking in. Personally, I thought the kid had a golden arm, but he was dumb as a brick. But that's what made it fun. So I'm sure you all remember the bizarre story that happened week two of this year when the Los Angeles Chargers were suiting up to take on the Kansas City Chiefs first game in the new SoFi Stadium. And Tyrod Taylor gets a punctured lung because he was trying to get a painkiller administered for his cracked ribs. And then the doctor just kind of, I guess he just missed a spot or whatever. And yeah. Five, ten seconds before kickoff, we all found out that Justin Herbert was going to be the starter for that game. And in that game, Herbert goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mahomes. Chargers were executing perfectly for a large part of the game. The game plan that you need, and it's not optional, the game plan that you need to beat the Kansas City Chiefs, which is just grinding, 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 grind clock. The game goes into overtime, and Anthony Lynn does not go for it on fourth down, which I thought was absolutely ridiculous, considering the fact that Herbert had played well all game. Uh, I felt like you could have rewarded him with, uh, you know, maybe going for it on fourth down. Because even if you don't get it, like, you know the Chiefs are probably going to score again. 
But yeah, Butker kicks, I don't know if you guys remember, but five, like, 50-yard field goals in a row. It's going to be a common trend this year where we're going to see that Herbert has just basically been screwed over by Anthony Lynn's atrocious play calling, which is insanely weird to think about considering the fact that when the Chargers won 12 games, people thought Anthony Lynn was a pretty good head coach. Week three, they lose against Carolina due to the fact that there was a failed hook and ladder on the last play of the game, and it gives Rule his first win as a head coach of the Panthers. Next week, they go into Tampa, and the Chargers defense plays like absolute Swiss cheese, but Justin Herbert goes toe-to-toe with Tom Brady, passes for 290 yards and three touchdowns, and he threw a pick too, but making his first career start against Tom Brady, he showed that he was not afraid of anything. The next week, they play on Monday Night Football against the Saints, and Justin Herbert became the first rookie in Monday Night Football history to have four passing touchdowns in a single game. Now, in typical Chargers fashion, they ended up blowing this game. They have the bye and beat Jacksonville, and Herbert throws for three touchdowns that game as well. Then if there's one game all season the Chargers had a lead in that they definitely should have lost, it's uh, the game against that team, that pillow behind me right there. The game against the Broncos, they went up 24-3, and then Drew Locke brings the Broncos back, and they end up winning 31-30. They play Gruden's Raiders tough as nails, 26 for 42, 326 yards. Two touchdowns, no picks, and they end up losing on the very, very last play of the game uh, due to a time where the Chargers thought they scored a touchdown. It was eventually called back. Las Vegas wins the game. Herbert beat the Jets and looked amazing while doing so. The Chargers beat the Jets by six points and looked horrific doing so. Justin Herbert is on pace to shatter the NFL record for most touchdown passes by a rookie. The record is Baker with 27, I believe, in 2018. Yep, and then because he passed Manning in 2020, yeah, with 26. So uh, Justin Herbert is now on pace for 37. His 22 touchdown, you know, number ranks sixth in the NFL among starting quarterbacks. And the funny thing about that stat is, I think if you want to have a really good rookie quarterback, you just have to sit him behind Hyrod Taylor for two games. Herbert is much better than the Chargers' record indicates. As of right now, they are three and seven. And they are definitely a 3-7 and seven football team, uh, even with Herbert at quarterback. The defense is bad, and the special teams is somehow even worse. And it's not necessarily bad for them to be, uh, you know, losing games this year, because Herbert looks amazing, and you know he's the future. So hopefully they can fire Lynn, get a really good coach, uh, whoever it may be, whether they get a really young offensive-minded head coach, or they poach someone from one of the very, very, very successful teams in their same division, the Kansas City Chiefs. Maybe they hire Eric Bieniemy, and uh, they're going to get Derwin James back, and they're also going to get a top draft pick. Now, the only way they can screw up that draft pick is if they don't use it on an alignment or a wide receiver. Because I know Keaton Allen and Mike Williams are good, but if you really, really want to take Herbert to the next level, then maybe you should draft uh, Jamar Chase or Jalen Waddell or maybe even a tight end, you know running two tight end sets with Henry, and you got a great, great backup when Hunter Henry does end up going down. The only one who was on pace to shatter the rookie passing touchdown record was Deshaun Watson. He was on pace to get 46, and then he ended up tearing his ACL. And with Burrow basically tearing his ACL and blowing out his entire knee, I do not see how Herbert loses the Rookie of the Year award. Chargers O-line is terrible, and Justin Herbert is amazing against pressure. He was also the best quarterback in the league, or at least one of them, against zero. Justin Herbert also now leads the league and passes above 50 yards. So the strong rationale for keeping Anthony Lynn is that you don't want to screw up Herbert's development. And uh, that's basically it. The only other way around it is if uh, you look at one-score games and maybe they've had a bounce or two that didn't go their way. Specific in-game decisions that Lynn has actually made that has ended up costing them the whole damn game. But I also don't think I've been fair enough to Anthony Lynn in this video. I don't think... We can really say that Justin Herbert is having the greatest rookie quarterback season of all time in spite of the head coach and the offensive coordinator. I think he's doing it with them. But it does say something to Herbert's credit that he's doing it without a good O-line and with Eckler out, a very, very inconsistent run game. And they keep feeding Kalen Balazs despite him averaging like 3.3 yards per carry. As a Broncos fan, it is insanely sad to think about that we are going to have to watch Mahomes and Herbert in our division for the next 45 years. But I'm happy for the kid. You know, he's gained a new fan in the Kodiak despite playing for a division rival. And, uh, you know, after everyone was just shitting on him coming out of Oregon, I hope he goes on and has one of the most 
phenomenal careers uh, anyone can have. All right, guys, that is going to do it for the video. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're not already. Follow me on Twitter. Link is in the description below. Anyways, guys, have a good day and peace out.